Okay, so Amrita Shergill Rebel with a Paintbrush uh, is about the artist Amrita Shergill. Um, it is illustrated, draw, written by me, illustrated by Kalyani Ganpati, published by HarperCollins. And uh, the book tries to trace the very short, very productive, very dramatic life of Amrita Shergill, um, an artist who was born in 1913, died in 1941. And um, her uh, kind of, the, while talking about her story, it also looks at very different parts of the world and of uh, history and geography and all of that. So Amrita was born in 1913 and died in 1941 at the age of 28. Um, from roughly the age of 16 to 28, she's left us with about 175 paintings. And that, and they're not like small paintings, they're like big paintings and that's like a huge body of work. And what's, what was fascinating for me as a totally lay person uh, about Amrita as an artist is that to begin with when she's in Paris, she's drawing beautiful, academically, like perfect, almost 3D like, you know, very realistic paintings of models and people and friends and parents, sister, etc. Then around 1935 when she comes back to India, her style changes dramatically. It becomes flat, it becomes mural-like. And when I was showing these paintings to my daughter and her friends, um, two, three of them looked at the paintings because there's a whole bunch across different periods of her life. And two, three of them looked at it and said, Auntie, she was drawing so nicely. Why did she start drawing so badly? You know, so for me, that was an, a very important moment because at that point I realized that, okay, this is what I want the book to be about. I don't want to say, I don't want to use artistic terms and jargon. I want them to see that this is the span of her work. She began drawing like this. She could draw and paint like this, but she chose to paint like that. Now, why? Because often you have people looking at Picasso's work and saying, what rubbish is this, you know? But there's always a reason behind why an artist chooses to draw or paint in a particular way. And we take the lazy way of saying, oh, my child could draw like this. But there's a reason behind why the, author, the painter has you know, chosen to draw like that. And that's what I want the kids to think about. So in this book, we have, what we've done is, and my publisher has been fantastically supportive about this, we've got about 40 of Amrita's paintings. And it goes the whole range from her super, super good, so to speak, paintings to her flat paintings. And there are reasons given in the book as part of the narrative. But more than that, I want children to think for themselves. That, and is there, are there clues in the story as to how and why her work changed? It was, I think it was difficult because um, Amrita has always been written about by and for adults. Fortunately, I have a strong inner child, <laughs> so um, I kind of immediately gravitated towards the uh, more childlike elements of her life. Um, for instance, there's this one, uh, there's this picnic, you know, that she goes on with her friends where um, they go to some falls and you can see it's very beautifully uh, drawn here. They go to fa some falls with a picnic basket and it's a disastrous picnic because uh, People get lost, it starts raining, and Amrita hits her head on a tree and, you know, sees stars, literally. And this was, um, you know, in most of her biographies, it's just kind of described and mentioned and kind of it's not a big deal. But for me, it became like a big, exciting thing because I felt like, okay, this is a moment where I can really, you know, build it up. So it's not like I fictionalized it, but I gave it more importance than perhaps a any other writer on writing a biography on an artist would because my audience is children and I want them drawn in, I want them hooked in, I want them to 
kind of live the life of this eight year old who's taken to Florence, who sees all the great masters, you know, who is, um, who's, who kind of doesn't realize then but remembers later that her tastes in art were made by the fact that she had seen great masters, paintings by great masters so early on, you know. And then there were moments in India, for example, where she would see um, child marriages, you know, uh, and that was very traumatic for her because she had never seen anything uh, like that. She never knew that children could lack agency in that sense. And she says, you know, the poor bride, she had no idea what was going on um, with her. For example, there's this picture of a young bride dressed in finery and jewelry and with no clue and no power, no control over what would happen to her fate. So it was interesting and it was um, fun, I think, but it was also, um, you know, there were these moments when I was wondering, is this appropriate, not appropriate? Will it shock children? Will it not? But I think um, the idea is to open up, you know, I always feel that we tell children this artist was great or that artist was great, but we don't talk about the little things that make up the structure of that greatness. Greatness is not a monolith. It's made up of many tiny experiences, you know. So that's what I've tried to do in this book. So I'm very aware that uh, for children, the first level of the text is actually the visual. The book might start from my head and it might eventually be built on what I've written. But for children, the first level of engagement is at the visual level. So I'm always kind of very keen to get like a strong illustrator. And what I loved about the illustrator of this book, Kalyani Ganpati, is that uh, while she's done a very, has a very alluring and very sort of engaging style, at no point has she tried to outdo Amrita's art. She's been very respectful, very restrained in, uh, you know, in sparkling but not out-sparkling Amrita. And um, like, for example, there's this one illustration, illustration that really I love a lot. This is Amrita and her sister in Florence at a time when they were taken there and they weren't happy about going. So there you have Amrita's father hugging his children and crying. And you have the girls Yet in um, Florence, they looked at some very beautiful art and it was seminal for Amrita because as she grew up, she realized how much the effect of that art was. So you have them looking at the David, you have the skyline of Florence, you know, and all of it knit. And there's this tiny postcard which we have, which is an actual photograph of a diary entry that Amrita has made of herself sadly waiting for her mother to come and pick them up from their boarding school in in Florence. So all of it knit together so beautifully, you know, and um, as the book progresses and as Amrita's art becomes more and more important, you can see Kalyani withdrawing a little bit and giving Amrita center stage. And um, the other thing is that not only was uh, Kalyani's illustration so beautiful and powerful, um, there are five layers in this book. There's the layer of Amrita's story, her life story, there's Amrita's paintings, there's Amrita's father's photographs that we've put in here. He was one of India's first amateur photographers. There's also a lot of background information. What was happening in the world of art or the world of history or anything like why Amrita was caught between, um, you know, two countries during two world wars. What were the world wars about? So there's a lot of that background history and there are Kalyani's illustrations. To have these five layers and to have them all work so seamlessly and so kind of in such a in sync kind of way, I think that's uh, quite a feat that she's pulled off. And um, it took me a while to find the illustrator, but I'm glad that, you know, somewhere we have this like really good match of chemistry where we kind of both, because there's, you know, there's always been so many books in the West about Western artists. It's not like we don't have artists. It's just that we, you know, there's never been an opportunity to tell their stories. And now is a time in, I think in India currently, it's a very happy time for us because there's an interest in Indian stories, in Indian writers, Indian artists. There's also enough number of people to create it. So it's a nice, you know, jigsaw puzzle moment where there's a lovely matching and a lovely fit of these two things. So one of the things Amrita said early on, which is there as a quote in this book, is that she hated interference from adults. <laughs> I think that's something that kids will 
kind of resonate with. And just the fact that she loved color, she loved form, she loved experimenting with it. Um, that I think would sing to most children, you know. And there's um, at the visual level, I am just amazed that Kalyani has pictures like this in the book, which are so evocative, so colorful. And um, that I hope that so the whole idea is to somehow hook kids, right? And then sort of seep in the information like in the spy fashion. But so the idea is that if there is enough that is alluring and mischievous and whimsical in the book, they will come in, and then whether or not they want it. You know, there some pollination of ideas will happen. So that's the thing. And I, I have kept Amrita as a child. Um, I kind of forefronted all her rebelliousness, all her mischief, all her kind of disobedience. You know, um, she gets thrown out of two schools. To me, that's not shameful. That's fantastic that she was, you know, and her parents gave her the space to be thrown out of two schools and then to say that, no, we'll homeschool you, come, you know. Um, so that takes courage. Everything takes courage. You know, there's a lot of personal courage in all these stories, right? So the idea is that celebrate all of those aspects, her love for color, her love for mischief, her love, her rebellious sort of uh, headstrong nature. And hopefully that will sing. There's a certain honesty that I hope kids will get in the book. So when I was writing this, when I was writing Amrita's story, I couldn't help but notice how much, um, you know, the world and the times that we are in impact an artist's life, right? So I was talking about the world war, I was talking about the impressionists. I didn't want kids to wonder what is this about and then store it in their minds and later go to Google. I wanted there to be just enough information for them to get sated for just that moment, you know. So I think that the background information that I have is a great way for uh, parents and teachers to open up conversations, okay. Now the very fact that it took 13 to 15 days to come from Budapest to India or that uh, to Colombo from where you can take a train all the way to Shimla or the fact that, um, you know, that it was so difficult to travel, to take, like you have to take a horse cart to see Mahabalipuram. Now there are day buses that stop at Mahabalipuram and then continue to Pondicherry. So, you know, the the I want parents and teachers and librarians to point out these differences between our world and that world, you know. So that's interesting. Secondly, the book begins by talking about how suddenly people had begun to travel, which is how uh, Amrita's parents met. You know, a Hungarian woman who's come to London looking for work, a Sikh man who's trying to heal his heartbreak and going to London, the two of them meeting in Lahore again, you know, and then getting married and then having children and then him going back to Budapest, getting stuck there because of World War I. So all of these things, you know, we are geography or geography or history shape us to be who we are. And I'd like parents and teachers to use these kind of entry points to talk about these things. Why does politics matter? Why does history matter? Why does geography, why is it important? Because it's going to shape who we are, you know. So that's the entry point that I hope parents, teachers and librarians will use, um, which means that they also have to read the book, <laughs> you know, homework for mom and dad and librarian and teachers. Um, if they read it and if they can have conversations with students or children, then I think that would be my work done. Because the whole idea is that um, to slip in information wherever we can. I think that's the um, kind of South Indian rigorous auntie in me coming out saying, but what are we learning? No, but it's great, right? That the whole idea was that children should not have to look outside of the book for information. So pepper it with information. That is the whole.